Bruh. Prize Picks currently has Mitch Trubisky for Thursday Night Football at 200 passing yards. Last time Mitch Trubisky threw over 200 passing yards in an NL game was Week 17 of 2020. They play Cleveland on Thursday night. Cleveland's got a nice little pass defense. They got some nice pass rush going on there. There's a chance that if Mitch Trubisky plays really poorly again, like he has been all season, that he gets benched in this game. I would not be surprised if we saw Pickett step on the field at some point on Thursday night. All right? That means Mr. Biscay played poorly. That means Mr. Biscay went under 200 passing yards. All right, so go to Prize Picks. It's your first time on the app. You're going to download it and use promo code BDGE when you deposit $10 or more, and they're going to double whatever you put down, and then you're going to put it on Mitch Trubisky, and then you're going to double that and triple that, and we're going to fucking make all the revenue, right? And then you're going to have revenue to spend on the waiver wire. Not real revenue, but, you know, Monopoly money fabs type stuff. We're going to talk about the waiver wire. Top 10, 12 guys to pick up. We actually made uh, our developer over here at BDG made us a beautiful rankings page where it's got all of my waiver wire pickups ranked. We've got by position. We've got flex plays. We've got the fab uh, budget suggestion. I would spend on all of these guys as well as whether or not I'd use the number one waiver wire on them in normal waiver wire leagues. That is available for our big dog members, which you can go sign up for at BDGE.com co forward slash products that will be linked down below if you want to get our in-season weekly rankings whatever 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 let's get into the good stuff i would say you know at the quarterback position there's streamers all left and right i only play in super flex leagues these guys aren't readily available but you've got the tua coming off the six touchdown game of course they play buffalo i think rest of season you got to be excited about tua i don't know if any of y'all saw that video of him throwing the ball righty it looked like a different qb it looked like a qb that i would fall in love with but the fact that throws lefty makes it feel weird but he made it look good on Sunday, six touchdown passes. Hill and Waddle are so good. I could not have been more wrong about this offense. They are so pass heavy and they are so pass lovely. It just looks, it's just lovely to watch them pass the ball right now. So, two is obviously a pickup on quarterback leagues. Jimmy G is the guy in super flex leagues that you want to break the bank on, especially if you own Trey Lance, who is out for the season now. If I'm a Trey Lance owner and I'm desperate at QB, listen, I'm probably throwing anywhere between like 30 and 50% of my fab on Jimmy G. If you're in a more competitive league, you might even have to go higher. I'm not going to pull back on the reins as I just brought up with Kenny Pickett and uh, Mitch Trubisky. I think now is the time. Now is the time to start thinking about picking up Kenny Pickett. If he's sitting there on wire in super flex leagues, because it's only a matter of time before Mitch Trubisky starts to play so bad that they have no choice, but to bench his arse. And that's when Kenny Pickett comes in and goes bonkers because they've got a weapons group that is just underutilized because Mr. Bissey cannot get them the ball. If we look at the running backs, here's the thing. There's a few injuries. There's a few players that we need to talk about again, as always. I'll start off by saying you need to go get Brian Robinson if he's available. Most, I think he's probably sitting on the end of a bench of most leagues, but if he's available, he is someone that I would legitimately spend a number one way wire on. I would probably throw between 15 and 20% of my fab on if I need a running back. All reports are, I mean, he can't come back before week four because he's on the IR, but he's like back at practice. He's doing things physically. He's going to be ready very quickly, and as soon as he gets onto the field, he's going to have a very big role in an offense that's moving the ball way better than anyone expected them to do so. So Brian Robinson is actually my number one pickup this week. Followed closely behind by Raheem Mostert, who I have about a 15% fab suggestion on. He took over the Miami backfield in this one. Out carry Chase is 11 to 5. Neither of them were like too involved in the passing game. Here's the thing. This offense is just going to be pass first, and they're operating that way, and it's working for them. This is an offense where even if you have the correct RB1, whether it's Chase, whether it's Raheem Mostert, I don't think any of them really give you brown, uh, groundbreaking upside. So I'm not breaking the bank on Raheem Mostert, although he is my number two running back this week. Followed closely behind by Darrell Williams, Arizona. We saw James Conner uh, walk away from the game with a low ankle sprain. It's not supposed to be serious. He missed the whole second half. But low ankle sprains typically can be played on the next week. At most, it's going to be a one-game absence here from James Conner. So, again, I'm not breaking the bank on Darrell Williams or Eno Benjamin. Uh, Darrell Williams seems to be the guy who comes right after James Conner in the depth chart. He gets the early down work, maybe some goal line work, but Eno Benjamin is playing a pass-catching role. Both of them are good in the pass-catching game. Again, it's just going to be a committee as opposed to when James Conner is on the field. It is a workhorse-type role. Um, but low ankle sprain, not too severe, so I'm not overly excited about Either of those two Arizona running backs, plus I don't know, the Arizona offense is very, very sus at the moment. In between those two, I have Rashad White again. I'm pretty sure he is. This might be a week where he gets finally thrown off someone's bench, right? You, people might have drafted him and been like, oh, I'm going to wait for Leonard Fournette to get hurt. And it ain't happening yet. Fournette's getting all the touches. Rashad White's the two there, but he isn't really making an impact. It's going to happen eventually. Leonard Fournette, I'm not going to predict an injury, but I'm going to fucking predict an injury. Because Leonard Fournette's getting too many touches. He's not going to get 30 touches per game and stay healthy throughout the course of the season. 
Trout White will eventually touch the field in a big way, and he needs to be stashed on all rosters. Again, people are going to become impatient. They're going to drop him soon, and that's when you strike. He needs to be added on the back of every single bench. Those are my top five running backs. Again, if you want the rest of them, you can go over to bdge.co and see the top 10 plus the fab I would spend on them. But the story of the week here is the is the wide receivers for sure. And number one on this list, Garrett Wilson, uh, these rookies, they're all the rookies are going nuts this year. I don't think we have a flop in a round one rookie thus far, right? It's like Drake London, obviously Jameson Williams still has to come back from his ACL, but Garrett Wilson, Drake London, uh, Jahan Dotson, Traylon Burks, all of these guys are major, major hits thus far. And if they're sitting there on the waiver wire, those are the priority ads because we've seen it over the last three or four years. These rookie wide receivers are making an impact and they're making it quickly. And the ones to jump on are the ones that start off slow, but you start to see the snap counts rise incrementally over the first month of the season. And then they go bonkers. We saw it. We've seen it every fucking year. Justin Jefferson, T Higgins, Chase Claypool. They take a little while to get going, but as soon as they are the guy in the offense, there's no holding back, man. It's the reason these guys are top 10 to 15 picks in the NFL draft because they're dominant players. And Garrett Wilson went nuts on Sunday. Obviously this was a game script. I mean, the jets are typically in game scripts where they're going to throw the ball a lot, but they were down a lot. And Joe Flacco was throwing the ball, throwing the ball, blah, 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 whatever. Garrett Wilson, eight catches over hundred yards, got in the end zone. Like this dude was balling. And I always, I was really high on Elijah Moore going into the year. I would much rather have Wilson in dynasty. I always thought Wilson was more talented, but it would take him, you know, at least half a season to become the guy here. It didn't take long. I don't know if he's like the dominant number one right now, of course, but he's coming off a big game. This is the time to go grab him because if he does break out, you'll never have another chance to get him because he's about to go fucking nuclear for the rest of the season. So Garrett Wilson is my number one overall waiver wire pickup if he's available, followed by Jahan Dotson, who's coming off another big game. So I doubt he's available either because he was probably a a popular waiver wire pickup the week prior. Same thing with Traylon Burks, who's right there at number three. He seems poised to be the number one target in Tennessee. What that actually means in terms of upside, that's why he's rank below all these other guys because the Tennessee offense stinks. Ryan Tannehill looks bad. And I don't know if I really want to invest much in that entire passing offense, which was one of my concerns going into the year with Traylon Burks to begin with. But I think he'll end up being the number one target in this offense. He's looked good enough where I feel comfortable like rolling him out in a flex play if I really, really need to. Those are top three guys, probably pretty highly owned. But Jacoby Myers right behind him coming off like a really big target day, nine for 95, I believe. So this is a guy who's like going to have his week one games where he didn't do much. And you're like, oh, Jacoby Myers. And he has his games where he gets a lot of targets. You're like, oh, Jacoby Myers is kind of underrated. Everyone kind of does the same thing. Next week, he'll go five for 40, and then you'll be like, fuck, it's Jacoby Myers. But you can throw him in your flex play, PPR, half PPR, if you are desperate. He's not someone I'm like overly excited to get into my lineups. They do play Baltimore this week, and Baltimore has been awful at defending. They're really banged up. They were really banged up entering the year, offensive line, but mostly defensive backs. Their D-backs are not good. They're hurt. They're coming back from injuries. And this is a team that's letting up a lot of points through the air. We just saw Tua and the Dolphins absolutely rip through this team. So I wouldn't be surprised if we saw another big game from Jacoby Myers in this week. Uh, Michael Gallup is number five here. Okay, so Michael Gallup is still coming back from his ACL, but this will be the first week that he tries to participate in practice fully. Um, We obviously have to wait for Dak Prescott to come back. Cooper Rush is under center. He has to wait for uh, the IR stint to be done with because he is out for at least the first four games Michael Gallup is. So he's got a minute to come back, but he's in the similar situation with Brian Robinson. Like, there is nothing really going on in Dallas outside of CeeDee Lamb. Noah Brown had the big game, but he is just a field stretcher. He's not a possession guy. Michael Gallup is a better version of Noah Brown. So as soon as Michael Gallup gets back on the field, Prescott probably won't be far away from returning. And then it's Michael Gallup and CeeDee Lamb. And I think Michael Gallup can have a very big second half of the year. So Gallup's a guy that I would probably grab now. And since he's on the IR in real life, you could probably put him on the IR in your actual fantasy league if he's unowned. Uh, We have Joshua Palmer, who's coming off a decently big game. If Keenan Allen is out, you know, he's someone that you could probably start as long as Justin Herbert is playing. Sterling Shepard has looked great coming back from the Achilles tear. He's like, him, weird, weird. Uh, This fucking New York Giants passing game is just so ugly. It went from somehow... Kenny Galladay and Kadarius Toney making this look like a kind of good offense on paper to David Sills, Richie James, uh, Sterling Shepard. But I would prefer Sterling Shepard um, out of any of these guys. If you're in a deeper league, I would kind of look at Richie James or David Sills, but definitely not get overly excited about. Ashton Doolin is a guy that you can get overly excited about for the Indianapolis Colts, though. And I have him down here at like number nine or 10 on my rankings. Ashton Doolin is a dude that his name's been thrown around the dynasty world a lot for a lot of years because he had, he was such a dominant college player. He went to like Malone, I believe. Uh, hasn't really done anything in the NFL, but he's finally got his chance and he like became the number one with Michael Pittman and Alex uh, and Alec Pierce out for Indianapolis. They had no other weapons and uh, Ashton Doolin, big target share. 
big target percentage per route run. Like he became that guy. And there's a very good chance that Doolin ends up being the wide receiver two in Indy behind Michael Pittman in an offense that badly needs playmakers. So Ashton Doolin is definitely a dude who's very, very under owned that you can get in deeper leagues. Same thing with Greg Dortch out in Arizona. So I know a lot of people are going to get excited about like Rondell Moore returning too, but he's not practicing at all. He's got a very serious hamstring injury. And to be honest with you, if Rondell Moore was doing what Greg Dortch has been doing, people would be losing their fucking minds. So don't go out of your way to pick up Rondell Moore in hopes that he can overtake Greg Dortch when he gets healthy just to do what Greg Dortch is doing. Just go get Greg Dortch. He's not someone I'm overly excited about because, again, this Arizona Cardinals offense is hard to be excited about right now outside of a very few pieces, but he's really involved in the offense. Kyler Murray trusts him. He's getting a lot of volume. He's getting a lot of targets, and uh, there's clearly very uh, a lot of fucking opportunity open there. So Greg Dortch is a dude that I think you can grab, and you know if you're in a start through wide receivers two flex kind of league and want to throw him into your second flex spot, I think you could definitely do worse there. So those are the wide receivers right now. The rookie wide receivers are explosive. They're the dudes that you want to grab ASAP. Tight ends. Irv Smith was probably dropped after last week. Irv Smith had a big game last night, got into the end zone, would have had a much bigger box score. He dropped an absolutely perfect fruitcake piece of basket. Fucking, I don't even know what I'm saying right now, but he dropped a beautiful 60-yard, would have been touchdown right in his hands, and his box score would have been masterful. Irv Smith would have had his breakout game. He looked good. He looked good in the open field. Uh, so Irv Smith is a guy that I'm excited about. They play Detroit next week, which is a, a defense that you can score points again. Hayden Hurst, Logan Thomas, Tyler Conklin are the other three that I'm you know, not overly excited about, but I'm looking at if I need a tight end. Logan Thomas is playing more and more snaps as the week go by, returning from the ACL tear. Carson Wentz has been on fucking fire, and we want pieces of this. As crazy as that sounds, we want pieces of this Washington passing offense right now, and Logan Thomas is a big piece of that right now. So um, Logan Thomas, I don't think Tyler Higby should be available on any waiver wire right now, but he's getting a ton of targets in L.A., and if he is, he should be probably the top targeted dude. As for defenses, uh, I like Cleveland against Pittsburgh on Thursday night. Cleveland's at home. They're favorited 38 and a half over under. So a lot of like defensive play, not a lot of scoring. Mitch Trubisky stinks. Uh, the Chargers are a defense that they're like 55% roster on sleepers. So they might be available in your league, but they're seven point favorites against the Jaguars. I uh, like the Chargers defense. And then I sneakily like Atlanta. I kind of like Atlanta's defense. They have been getting after the quarterback. They're blitzing at a very high rate. Their cornerbacks are kind of good. Uh, I kind of like the Falcons against Seattle, all right? So they're like my my wild card defense for the week. If you're in a deeper league, you're really desperate. And then, honestly, the Giants versus Dallas, like, I could kind of see myself picking up either of those teams. The Giants against Cooper Rush at home as favorites, low over under, but also the Cowboys with a good pass rush against Daniel Jones is always like a decent bet. So I would probably take the Giants at home over Dallas, but... If you're desperate, Dallas against the Giants isn't bad either. Anything could happen in an NFC East showdown. That's the waiver wire episode for today. Again, y'all can go get the waiver wire rankings, fab suggestions, all that shit. If you become a big dog member, link down below, bdge.co slash products. And make sure you go check out prize picks. Go hit that Mitch Trubisky line under 200 passing yards. Hasn't done it in like seven games. The guy stinks. He's getting mentioned for Pickett soon. Use promo code BDGE when you sign up. I'm out of here. I love you.